on record, I want to thank you for being a great friend over the years. It started out mysteriously for us both. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> me, me playing behind you in a group at a pro-am at, yeah. in Anderson, last South century. Carolina. Yeah, yeah, last century. And wondering when the hell is that group gonna move? <laughs> for that, that's Charlie Reimer. And I gotta thank you for being a great friend and opening my eyes to I think it's one of the best kept secrets in all the world, golf wise. I don't, I'm assuming that's what poked your interest. Well, yeah, John, and I, and I appreciate our friendship as well. And it's been, been a lot of fun uh, for me to get to know you. And, and um, you, you have different types of friends in life. And uh, John's the best kind of friend because uh, he's the kind of friend I've learned so much. Uh, from you about the, the 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 game, the business practice in the game, Thanks. construction. I, you know, I, I really I, our friendship has just been uh, amazing. It's been a lot of fun. Great getting to know you, but I've I'm, I've it learned a lot about it too. Right. It, it? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But uh, no, I, I right here where we're sitting. Um, you know, I, I mean, you can literally see I think six or seven states from here, and and uh, it, it's just a magical place. Look, Lookout Mountain. I. I uh, um, uh, was born about 30 miles that way, probably about six ridge lines up. Okay. And, and so this is always, and I've lived in a lot of different places. I've been fortunate to do a lot of different things, but my family is from here. I was born here, Cleveland, Tennessee. Um, and, and we're right in the area where Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia come together. So this mountain, Lookout Mountain, um, I, I'd been on this mountain a lot growing up, and, and primarily I'd come up and play Lookout Mountain Country Club, which is just up the road here Great in Macklemore. Golf course. Yeah, it's Great being golf course. redesigned right now, Seth Rainer Classic. And then uh, <laughs> I hate to admit this, I love Rock City. Uh, I've got, it's, Never played there. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> the tourist attraction, oh, okay. Rock City. <laughs> My fault. My fault. Never it's, been there either. Right. I mean, they've got like Fairyland, they've got a swinging bridge. And, and it's just a fascinating place um, geologically and, and uh, a lot of caves and, you know, all, all sorts of trails and, and waterfalls and all that sort of stuff is here. But all of that's up on the tip of the mountain, the part that looks into downtown Chattanooga. Right. That's the Tennessee side of the right. mountain. And I got an invite through a family connection to come look at McLemore. And, and I walked down with Dwayne Horton, our president, and, and stood just about right up here when this clubhouse wasn't here it was just a pad and I looked down into the valley and the valley was just like filled with cream and and uh underneath the golf course and and I just looked around and I and I told Dwayne Horton the president I said I don't know what it looks like but I want to be involved in this project and and it just hit hit me in the chest this is sort of a a spiritual place it's an emotional place Sounds like a homecoming it, it is it's wonderful it, it hits a lot of chords for me and and our president Dwayne Horton um, Dwayne actually grew up in the valley, and we don't call it a valley here, we call it a cove. We don't right. call it a cliff edge, it's a brow. Right. But uh, Dwayne grew up in the, in the valley, and he looked at these mountains as, you know, a whole life growing up, and, and he was one of those uh, folks you hear about. He was the first person in his, in his family to go to school, and he happened to go to Georgia Tech, which is where I went, and uh, he, he's, he's an engineer. He's just one of the smartest guys I've, I've ever known, and, and, um, and he, with him being the developer, and having grown up here and looking at this mountain, he, he, it, it's a labor of love for him. But it, there's and our, a lot of our investors, um, it's the same way. They just fall in love with the place and say, how can I get involved? And it, it's just one of those really special places that um, when you're here, you love being here. And the only thing that's sad about being here is when you start thinking about, I've got to leave, you know, <laughs> at some can, point and go somewhere else. I can relate to that because my story, as you well know, last summer I was looking for a place I could go to for a short period of time. And my idea was, why don't I do a two or three week residency? And I happen to bump into you again and you're like, well, what about Macklemore? And my, my question to you was, what the hell is Macklemore? <laughs> and after some coercing, you got me up here this past summer. And my wife and I, as we're leaving the gate, had that exact feeling. It's yeah. like, wow, we don't want to go. When are we coming back? And it wasn't within a week. I scheduled this visit and have scheduled mm. lots of visits with you going forward. Right. We, ho we hope that you are here a lot. No doubt about that. No, I want to be here a lot. Yeah. And there's a lot of good things we can talk about with that here shortly. The 
the premise of Macklemore, I talked to, to Tom Schreiner when I was here last, and he's always talking about the service and the family and the environment. From your perspective, what is that like? What is that kind of feeling for you here as being part of the family? Well, it, it all has to work together, John. I mean, you can't have a, a, a world-class top 100 uh, in, the, in the U.S. golf course, a beautiful clubhouse and property and all that, and, and not have staff that makes you feel like you're at home. And, and uh, you know, all, all of that has to go together to, to create the experience that we want to have our guests and our members and our property owners have. And, and um, in, in talking with our staff, they know they're the point of the spear. I mean, they're the first contact. You know, you only get one right. chance at a first impression, and, and they know that. And you mentioned Tom Schreiner. He's our general manager. Um, he, he's... Um, uh, an amateur, um, but he's probably the best golfer around, including all of us he's professionals. A, he's yeah, very good. and and this part of the world, and he, he just loves the game. But he loves young people as well. Um, he he was a golf coach and also involved in the administration at Covenant College, which is one of the most beautiful colleges in the world. It's just a few miles up the road. So he's always dealt with young people. He loves coaching people up. You know, when you're a coach, you're no, a coach. He's, he's a great coach. Yeah, we had and, a really good conversation. About yeah, that. and so he's been really valuable to us in, in getting the, the staff. Um, and not along with being friendly, you've got to be very proficient as well. And, and uh, they, they, do, they do an amazing job. They've got a great spirit. And, and what's really cool, I don't put a whole lot of emphasis on social media unless it's a positive stuff. <laughs> Which you don't get much of, but um, you know the, the comments that we get from our golf operations, from our from our staff, um, in, in our in our restaurant, um, almost universally, they they love our staff, and that, and that's one of the things that um, is vital to our success. Really, really important to you know to management and ownership, and re really proud of our staff. I'd take them up against any staff I've ever seen. I, I would I would second that. And yeah. you were telling a story at breakfast this morning about Kyle, who I met the last time I was here. Really unique story, but all you had to tell him this morning was great job last night, superstar, a lot of mm. things like that. It was just over selecting the correct wine. Well, yeah, there was more the to dinner. it than that. We, we had an amazing dinner in our private dining, one of our private dining areas last night, and and uh, Kyle leads uh, leads the troops, and uh, he, he his knowledge of wine and food and the pairing, and, you, you know, you have to have that sort of that, air about you, right. you know, when, when, when you're at a, at a fine dining establishment and you run it and the way you present everything. And we, we really had an amazing meal and, and uh, had some folks in that we were hoping to impress and roll the red carpet out for, and our staff certainly did that. It sounds like you did. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like you did. Now, somebody that you introduced me to a few years back is Reese Jones. Mm -hmm. And his partner here is Bill Bergen. I've yet to talk to Reese or Bill about this property, but I read Bill's Twitter account. Um, I see all the updates. You're, you know Reese pretty well. Give us a little insight as to not necessarily how they got involved. They got involved because Mr. Horton asked them to. I know mm. that, and the, the story's well written. But give us some idea of what they mean to this property and what they've been able to carve out differently than say somebody else would never have seen. Sure. So uh, first off, Bill Bergen um, grew up in Atlanta and and um, uh, pl played uh, his college golf at Auburn, played mm -hmm. the PGA Tour. He's a better better player than I certainly right. was and and uh, very, but very humble guy both in his, his um, um, reflecting on his career as a player and then the work that he's done. But if you look around in the Southeast over the past 20 years, uh, he's been phenomenal in going in and uh, uh, doing renovations and restorations and taking golf courses that are struggling and turning them into really successful products. In particular, he'd had a tremendous amount of success doing the mountain golf courses all the way up into Western North Carolina, which as you know, Mountain golf courses can be really tricky because you got a lot of water moving. You got to get off the playing surfaces and it, it, navigation, getting hold of hole, green to tee. Yeah, yeah, getting everything to where the agronomy was working properly. And and so Bill, um, very carefully after 
Uh, of course, Bob Cup is no longer with us, but one of the smartest guys in the business and, and, and was an apprentice for Bob Cup, but learned the business, committed to it. Um, uh, and, and, he, and now he's starting to get to that next level where some of the original designs are starting to shine through and he's right. in very high demand. He's very busy. But at the same time, we, we wanted to get um, the experience that Reese Jones has had in his career which, um, and, and if you look at his career, um, he's done quite a bit of original stuff. He's known as, a, as an open doctor. And um, I, it's either 27 or 28 golf courses that he's been involved in renovation and restoration have either hosted um, a, a, a Ryder Cup, a President's Cup, a Solheim Cup, or a major championship. And, then, and you know, that doesn't even count. You know, the work he's done in Atlanta, countless courses on the PGA Tour. So it's very seldom that you, know, you can have any weekend go by and you're watching, you know, one of the major tours and it's not on a Reese Jones golf course or one that he's renovated. Right. And and the thing that's really good, um, while I've known Bill longer than I've known Reese, I've also known Reese for about 15 years. John, they're just great people. They are. You know, I mean, they, they're, they're men of character. They operate in a great way. Um, you know, from a business standpoint, our... our Highlands course, which has gotten a tremendous amount of acclaim now, including being named top 100 um, golf course you can play by Golf Digest. Our 18th hole has been named um, top 10 one of the top, top 10 in the world yeah. finishing hole. And and um, but the, the the partnership that they have has been really really neat. And for me, it's fun. It's a di different style that they have, and it really is a true collaboration. So Bill likes to draw. He's very technical. He, right. he designs like an engineer, and Reese likes to get out and feel the dirt and sort of make it up as he goes along. So that, that combination is a really good combination because you know you're going to have your civil engineering features that you need to move water and other things. That's going to be taken care of. And then the, the artistry that you get from Reese Jones and, and his vast knowledge uh, and one, one of the things that's important to us, I'll get back to Highlands in a second, but our new course. Oh, you're talking about Around the Cove. Yeah, Around I was, the I Cove. Was gonna, I was wondering if you are going to be allowed to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll talk about that for sure. But we'll, we'll get to that new course in a, in a moment. But um, a, a great example of this was a renovation uh, Hi Highlands was. And, and so we have the same corridors that we've had. It had been a golf course for 16 years right. before Reese and Bill got a hold of it. But. 17 holes are the same routing, and it's new golf course within, um, and, and uh, everything was updated and upgraded, and our conditions are just phenomenal because of that. But um, Bill actually found our 18th hole. We have like, a, again, going back to brows, cliff edges, there's an upper brow and a lower brow. Right. And, and one afternoon, he very famously uh, put on his pith helmet <laughs> and his boots and, and goes over the brow and comes back up about three hours later with blood all over him, and he goes, I've got it. And, of course, it blew the whole budget up, but, but um, the decision was made to build the 18th hole. And while we've got, I think, 17 other really outstanding holes and, and a few that are you know, just really super, the 18th gets all the attention. And Bill's the one that went down and discovered that. And then, of course, Reese helped him with the, you know, the, the, the overall design. But it was just a really nice example of, of collaboration there. And, of course, the investment that we made in the 18th hole, which was not an inexpensive hole to build, has really paid off. Uh, because I, it photographs so well that it, it's really, I think, put us on the radar in the world of golf. It has. Uh, when I was here last, I heard a lot of complaining about it because it's probably one of the toughest driving holes mm -hmm. that anybody's ever going to play, particularly if you play a draw. Yeah, unless you're left-handed. That's true. I forgot <laughs> about that. It, it, it offer. I mean, that second brow that Bill found is just, it's it's wide enough but narrow enough and with enough topography for drainage mm. where if you're playing that right-handed draw, you better play what I call the gunslinger, the 40, 50-yard slinger, yeah. and hit it way up on the hill and just pray that it doesn't bounce hard. Or, or you can learn how to hit a cut and hold it up against the hill. Which <laughs> all good players eventually they do. They got to figure that point. out, yeah. Uh, the other amazing thing is the Karn. And when I had clients up here back in June, I utilized that a lot. Mm -hmm. And what a great asset from a learning, uh, a coaching, but also a fun. While I was here, there's tons of groups out here during dinner mm -hmm. 
having putting contests, chipping contests. How did the, how was that conceived? Well, what, what, what was interesting that really discovering the 18th hole was pivotal in, in um, a lot of the success we've had here because where we're sitting right now was actually the old 18th hole. And, and uh, we've got a brand new half acre putting green that, that we just put in that, that came online. It's a, really a putting course. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we've got some really cool lighting on that. And that's where folks yeah. are getting out at night, you know, and, and having a real cool putting contest. There's enough light there to putt and have fun, but it doesn't right. look like a soccer field up here. But, but where we're sitting was the 18th green and um, 18th fairway. And so it was very integral to us because as soon as we got the, the, the new hole, we were able to shift the clubhouse site the putting green, the short course is what was in the fairway going back to the tee, and that opened up some tremendous real estate opportunities as well. So we, we have um, um, Clubhouse Lane, it's called, and, and it's really our, our prime real estate because it's got the great view, it's on the edge, and, and what's really neat with the accolades that we've gotten, you don't get a chance very often to have a home overlooking uh, you know, top 100 golf right. course or a top 10 hole, right. finishing hole in the world. So. That 18th, not only did it get us notoriety, but it allowed all of this to happen to get our clubhouse on the edge here that increased the view. So that, that was sort of the beauty of the whole design. Uh, and, and that's what enables us to sit right here. And, and it's very, and as you mentioned, it's very functional. Folks love our short course. This winter, um, we've got it overseeded. We're gonna have it striped up. Um, you can see oh, that's that gonna be awesome. rise coming in right now. Yeah, it and is. Um, and it, it's, uh, uh, I think it's going to be very stark looking, you know, with that patch of beautiful green right there. And, and I, I like, you know, it, it, it's great for, um, you, you know, folks, you and I are getting a little older. We can still play 18 holes, <laughs> but, you know, just to get out and play golf, if you're a little bit older, if you're a little bit younger, if you're new, if you're a beginner, and even if you're a good player and you want to sharpen up your short game, it's just a really nice tool to have a six hole short course. Absolutely. So can we go around let's do it can we go around the the cove here the the brow absolutely and i gotta start this with a really funny story at least to me the last time i was here we're sitting down we're having a beverage we're catching up and all of a sudden your eyebrows go hey you want to go see something and i'm like what come on follow me and we get <laughs> we get in this four-wheel gator open aired and we're going down the street at 60 miles an hour in a gator i'm like where the hell are you taking <laughs> oh you gotta see this you gotta see this and two hours later we're both four inches thick in brown dust from at that point it was affectionately called the pig pen yeah it's now called the outpost yep and you were beside it's a it's a first time other than a couple of other funny times we've been together that I'd seen that much energy and excitement mm. out of you. It was like a kid in a candy store and it was nothing more than ground being cleared. Mm -hmm. What is the outpost gonna mean to this property? To me, it's, it's like, wow, we've already got a great Highlands outpost. It, it, there's, not, there's not a scene on outpost that I saw that's not gonna offer me the same thing on any team. Well, when we were um, looking for ground for a new golf field collection, the Cloudland Lodge is called, um, we, we had to have a second golf course. Right. In fact, I, I, I think we end up with more golf courses as we um, move forward. But we weren't looking to try and outdo our current golf course. You know, when you start trying to outdo something that's already gotten in the top 100, you can um, you know, go busted doing that. Right. Or you, you know, you, it might just be someplace you can't get. But um, when we started looking at this ground over here, and we've got about a 480-acre parcel uh, that's just extremely dramatic. It's got a mile and a half of cliff edge. And, and um, we started looking at some of the terrain, and we're like, this is just perfect ground for, for an old-school, golden age of architecture-type feel. And uh, so we, we got Bill involved and, and Reese involved, and... and um, they just went nuts over the property. And, and typically what happens in golf course design is by the time the golf design team gets the topo, the land planners have it marked up and the lots are going here, 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 and here. And you have these corridors, put a golf course, and you're limited to the corridors around the lots. 
Well, we did the exact opposite of that. We gave them the topo and said, build us the best golf course you can build us. And even for a Reese Jones, that's an opportunity that doesn't come along that right. often. And, and so we, what we've got is a golf course that um, will literally play right to the edge of that mile and a half of cliff. We've got five holes on those cliffs and every inch of it, you know, is covered up with, with, with golf hole. And, and uh, we t took a lot of trees out, which created really neat views. And the idea is, is we have a Lynx inspired mountaintop golf course. We call it mountain flat. It's going to be very walkable. Very walkable. And, and um, we think that uh, you'll be able to have a view into the bottom of the valley from at least one place on every hole. And, and um, it, it uh, is a really special place. We're doing some things that uh, we really want it to be a, a, a fun, exotic feeling sort of experience. So uh, we were going to have a golf course that plays very fast. It's going to have a lot of width. We've got a little over 50 acres of fairway program. Most golf courses are 25 to 28 acres of fairway, and we won't have much rough outside of that. It's going to be a very uh, strategic golf course where angles will be important. Um, and and the beauty of having a Reese Jones involved with, with his touch and uh, knowing what you have to do with the golf course if you're going to have a big event. We've got that baked into the cake, but that's not what the golf course is built for. Right. It's built for folks that play it every day to have a really enjoyable experience. But with the flexibility, long term, if we wanted to look at having a bigger event or have that opportunity, we would have it. So we've got tees, tees that can stretch the golf course to 7,800 yards, but the tee markers aren't going to ever be out there. Uh, so you, you, for as long as you play the tour, and obviously this the outpost isn't finished. Where does it compare of all the golf courses that you've played? Well, it's it's uh it feels like such a a really big bold golf course, and 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 I mentioned the width, the 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 site of the property. The greens are going to be big, so so it, it it it's it's a scale of like a Whistling Straits and Kohler, um, you know, and, it, and, it, and it's while it won't have the character of a Pete Dye golf course or a different style, but it, it it's just it's it it's big, and and everything sort of matches. We're trying to design the experience so it matches with the with the golf course down to even the menu, um, and and um, it it's it, it it's one of those places you know when you're playing seaside or you're playing mountaintop, you just have this you know, different kind of feeling you know and we didn't get a whole lot of you know that kind of golf course outside of say pebble beach right uh, on on you know on tour because we weren't really playing resort destinations but um it it's um the routing and listen i'm not comparing our new golf course directly to pebble beach but the routing is similar in that if you filled up our um uh our valley here our cove and as we call them water. if you filled it with water Right, and so our property there is, uh, I mentioned the mile and a half of cliff edge, but one plays out to the, from the clubhouse, or outpost building we'll call it, 18 plays in, nine and 10 are on the far side of the property. And, and so Pebble Beach is organized in sort of that same way right. with the houses up above looking across the golf course right. out into the Pacific. Uh, we're, we're sort of the same way, and, it's, and I see it's a similar type of property, and then the golf course is flat, and there's gentle slope coming up, so uh, with a similar type of routing, it feels a little like that, um, maybe a little like a Tor Torrey Pines, for example, okay. where Reese Jones has redone, you know, another big, right. it's a big another ballpark. Big property. Yeah, and I, you know, listen, I like playing all kinds of golf courses, but when you get a piece of property and you need a you know, a smaller footprint and you go find an old Donald Ross, it's like an intimate, you know, and I like that kind of golf too. Uh, and that's what we have right up the road in, in Lookout Mountain Country right. Club and old Seth Rainer. Right. But this one is, it is big. And and uh, it, it's uh, uh, going to have a lot of drama. And, and I can't wait for um, the reactions uh, for some of the first, first folks who get a chance to play it. So we've talked a lot about golf and the property is about golf. Mm. Right now it is, but it's metamorphosizing from a private facility to a private resort, per se. Someone who comes, they're not necessarily a golfer. What's here now mm -hmm. and what's on tap? Because I know what's on tap. That's really exciting. <laughs> but I get a lot of questions about what, what can my wife do now or 
what sure. can my spouse do now because he's working during the day and I want to come out and play. And the the Land Rover comes to mind right away. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that, the other amenities that are, that are right here, right now. I mean, obviously this back here is a big one. Yeah, well, right, right now we're very much golf centric um, and, and you, you um, look outside the gates, there's a ton of stuff to do. Chattanooga, two of the last four years have been named the number one outdoor city in America. So the, the hiking, the biking, the trails that we have here, uh, Cloudland Canyon State Park is a few miles from here. It's just spectacular. Um, the, um, uh, the demographics of where we are, we, we seem very remote, but, but we're an hour and 50 to Truist Park where the Atlanta Braves play. Right, um, drove right by and, it. Yeah, we're, we're two hours from Nashville. Uh, we're two hours or less from Birmingham, um, Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, there, there's lots of neat things to do in all, in all of those cities. And then I actually... Um, I think somebody told me there's five million people. Four, with it. 14 and a half million oh, people my fault within two hours. Yeah, 14 that's, and a half million. That's a million. big populace. Yep, and then you look at Chattanooga. Chattanooga is one of the hottest cities going right now for real estate. Believe me, I know I've been trying to buy a house. <laughs> there, there ain't any to buy. Um, but it, but Chattanooga, it's, it's known as a scenic city. It sits in a beautiful valley. The Tennessee River runs right through there. It, it feels like a smaller version of Pittsburgh to me. Uh, the architecture is similar. I would agree with that. Yeah, we've got a world-class aquarium. Uh, we've got a great minor great league zoo. ballpark. My, my sister's come up to the zoo yeah. with her kids for the years. Yeah, the zoo's one. Children's Museum, all that's 35 minutes from here. Um, great, great restaurants. Uh, a lot of really cool bars. Um, so, so there's a lot to do in the area now. On property here, uh, we have, um, oh, we're about to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about amenities we just had a blue sky rain <laughs> all right yeah. you're talking about a drink i think it could be a spa <laughs> treatment too in the right place yeah exactly yeah we had a little irrigation come through here but that, that blue sky rain that could be sky, a nice I like drink that. yeah we'll, a, we'll work on that something i'll deal with tonight yeah i understand <laughs> yeah i understand so amenity wise let, let's the the couple of amenities here Mm -hmm. Obviously, is the Craig award-winning menu, very small and quaint, but absolutely over the top when it comes to quality. Mm -hmm. I, I have not had even a bad breakfast. Today was the first breakfast I've had there in the biscuits and gravy, which I normally don't eat. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, I'll have that for lunch and dinner. Yeah. yeah that is incredible. Well, any facility that I have anything to do with is going to have good biscuits and gravy. They do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> They do, but a multifunction facility too, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Yeah, we, John, um, you know, traditionally in a resort business or the country club business, the idea is to build one big space and have everybody this is go not there. Big. And and we're we're it's we're, not we're, that. Yeah, we're the opposite of that here because if you look at what we're going to be uh, uh, in 24 months from now, uh, we, we're going to be close to having our second golf course. Uh, completed and ready to open. We'll have we'll have some food service there. The 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 crag right behind us. Uh, elegant dining there with a great view. Uh, we're going to have a teaching and training center along with having two world class bays where it's the latest and greatest in technology. We'll have five bays uh, that that are undercover outside that are gamified. But we're going to have a full kitchen and bar in that facility. Right. And that and that'll be the place where you can come with a T-shirt and your hat on backwards, and we, we are going to have sort of a caddy theme there, and and make that fun. It's a late night place. You can get you know made to order breakfast, but the hotel is going to have three restaurants as well. So I think when people come to a resort um, or or a member at a private resort, it's nice to have these little stations of different things to do. Right. And and we're going to continue that as we move forward with. Our development, um, we, we will go across the street, actually uh, Highway 157, but where we are on Lookout Mountain, we actually own the property from brow to brow. Right. So you, you, we're going to have westward look on the new side, eastward look on, on this side, but we know we have to have some amenities. So, in fact, just yesterday um, I was in on some meetings where we were doing some land planning. So music is a big part of what we do here. We always... Uh, have a concert series once series, a month, yeah. yeah, and that's generally 300 people or so. 
but across the road we're going to have the swim and tennis, uh, the pickleball, which is really big now. Uh, we'll, we'll have a healthcare facility. Uh, we'll have a general store, maybe a microbrewery. Uh, we're looking at doing a small to mid-sized amphitheater. Um, I, I'm blessed to have a, a lot of friends in the music business yes, that are. play golf, yes, and, you, and you know the tour buses go. You know, if you're going from Nashville anywhere on the East Coast, you got to come by here. Right. And, and so um, a lot of my music buddies know they're welcome, and, and we've already done some great shows, and that'll be a big part of what we do moving forward. We'll be looking at doing um, a shooting club, which um, is a lot of fun. I enjoy getting a chance to go out and, 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 and shoot skeet. Um, the, the other thing is, and, and we didn't get to it, but um, Macklemore Cove, uh, and Macklemore, by the way, uh, that was a Scottish clan that settled right. this area, and there's some neat stories involving... Uh, John McLemore marrying into the, the Cherokee Indians. He married an Indian princess, and he was actually um, ended up being uh, a Cherokee chief and then was a war hero uh, in the War of 1812. And so that's where McLemore name comes from, the cove. But we have some really interesting um, botanicals uh, that are only uh, maybe a handful that are only here in all of North America. And, and um, this is all conservation easement in the bottom wildlife management on the far side uh, that, that will never be developed. And there's actually the largest free fall cave in North America that's in that mountain over there. Really? That's uh, almost 600 feet vertical drop, really big, wide cave. That's something and, for Gene to do. Yeah. That's something for him to yeah, do. Yeah, cave on. network. So there's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of really neat stuff that's going on right here. Uh, you, you talked about the Land Rover experience earlier. We've got... Uh, um, actually, we have a vintage Land Rover, and, and we do it's an some... an awesome vehicle. Yeah, we do some nice um, sunset tours where uh, you'll learn about what's going on in the valley geologically and with all the botanicals and, and, and some of the wildlife as well and, and get catch a great sunset, have a nice picnic with some wine and cheese. And, you know, you got to put your pinky out when you're doing that sort of I stuff. Know, and I, know, a little champagne, I know a bartender maybe. that shakes like that. Yeah, shakes yeah, exactly. Like so... But that's a good experience, our Land Rover experience. But we're going to continue to add amenities and invest in this property. And, and we really do um, uh, feel like we are a, uh, a world-class golf resort destination. And, and uh, we work really hard to have the amenities that people would expect uh, to have with that uh, type of profile. And, and we're still early on in the growth process. So a lot of things are coming or on the drawing boards. So I've been asking you all the questions. Mm. And you normally interrupt me when I'm trying to answer questions. <laughs> We're going to switch hats here. Let me get started telling people what my thoughts, my vision, maybe even my role here is. And poke me. Poke sure. me, poke me when you got to poke me. Next June, I plan to come back for, I'm hoping, a month and do what's called residency. And in your eyes... It was always going to be not necessarily a director of instruction here, but people like myself visiting mm. for a week, 10 days, two weeks. I'm going to try to stay a month. Yeah. I want to be smarter. You try to stay three months. Well, we're talking <laughs> about that. But my idea of this residency, and, and you and I have had some discussions about it, is typically my full day school where we're on the practice facility, we're at the, the Cairn playing. We go to the Craig for lunch and then 18 holes of on course mm -hmm. instruction. That fits in with what goes on here. Yeah. Beautifully, if if I, I should say so myself. Um, the the amenities as far as staying here, right now it's just, it's cottages. I uh, can sleep as many as what eight. No, we've got cottages that'll handle a lot more than that. Okay, then, and then there's homes. And, and homes that'll sleep a lot more than right. cottages will sleep eight. I've been staying in the condos, three bedroom, which are awesome. Hmm. Um, what is it about that do you think someone can really get benefit from? Not necessarily for me as a coach, but the unique, you've seen me coach at other places, particularly in Orlando. What does Macklemore offer to somebody who's going to do that full day experience? Well, first and foremost, um, like John, I'm a PGA member, a proud PGA member, and, and um, we, we are a facility that wants to be very welcoming to our brothers and sisters in, in the PGA of America. And, and looking at, at your business and the way you teach, 
um, and seeing how hot it is in Orlando <laughs> in the summertime. And I wear black I, all year yeah, long. Yeah, well, I understand. But I, I just thought, um, you know, to have a PGA Master Professional as a national award winning PGA member that's done a wonderful job of building up a great teaching business to give you another facility uh, to be able to get your clients to, your well-established clientele, um, in, in the summertime when Orlando is just a little bit difficult to work in Orlando to spend time up on the range and you know the heat is just I mean I lived there for 11 years it, it's a, it's a little rough the rest it of the is. time you know it, it's great but uh, my, my goal was just to, to uh, find a couple of teachers that I trust and know and, and like and and figure out a way uh, that we can provide something that fits with your business. So if we're providing a great service to you, you're bringing great folks in, we're going to benefit from that somehow, some way, long term. And we're happy to have great students in. We're happy to have uh, folks use our facilities. And it just seems like a really nice fit. Uh, looks like win, win, win for, for everyone involved is, is the way I look at it. Absolutely. And I would say I've, I've gotten a lot of questions from fellow PGA members. Hey, how is it up there? What, what can I do up there? And I've been very proactive and very complimentary. And that was the initial discussion yeah. between us. And then I get up here in June and some hints were thrown out. Before I get to the hints, let me go back and say, Soft openings of Cloudland and Outposts still around December of 23, soft openings? We, we think a soft opening uh, with a hotel December of 23. We'll be booking probably March 1st of 24 um, with maybe some limited opportunities ahead of that for the hotel. The golf course is probably going to be a little bit behind that. The construction will have been completed it's the growing. fall of 23. But then you have the grow in, and, and because of the altitude here, our I'm guessing the hard opening for the outposts will probably be July 1st. And that's where we've been talking about, hey, I might be spending three or four months up here yeah. as a coach in residence, per se, and helping everybody out here, developing some programs that are not only good for my clientele, but just great to bring the world to Macklemore. With. Well, well, the thing the thing is 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 um, you, when you have good players and good teachers hanging around, you get a place that people want to go. Right. Uh, for, for example, uh, Gibby Gilbert, who's a four-time PGA Tour winner, six times on Champions PGA Tour. He he's a Chattanooga guy. He's a member here. Uh, Steven Yeager um, is uh, in his third year uh, uh, on the PGA Tour. In fact, he was right down to the line on. Um, he came in what one twenty four. Well, he was right there. He ended up finishing the top 100, but okay. his last three weeks on tour yeah. were really strong. So he's an active PGA Tour Which, by the way, you can see that interview on the YouTube channel of Macklemore. Yep, absolutely you can. So um, uh, ha have it, having you here, going out and attracting some other top teachers as well, and, and sort of making it a place where golfers who want to get better want to hang out. Um, and our teaching and training faci uh, facility that – I've talked about a little bit already. I I really feel like it's going to be a, a world class facility that has all the tools that you need. A Steven Yeager needs a, you know, a, a, a fitting for for someone who is here as a guest and they want to get in some new clubs. We'll be able to do all of that out of that facility. And then you add in our uh, the second range. We'll have an outpost, which uh, probably will be more of a warm up range, but we'll have that facility. A half acre putting green, the short course. I, I really feel like we've got the facilities. And without even getting into the golf courses to, to do what we need to do to um, become a, a place that people want to come and get to be a better golfer. I 100% I agree. And, and the, I got here Tuesdays, you guys are closed. And I got here on a Tuesday, so there was no one here to greet me, no one here to talk about it. All I had were the things that you told me about. And I get out of my vehicle and I look around. My wife looks around and says, how in the world did Charlie find this? Which is why <laughs> I asked the question earlier. But that entire time we were here, it, it was it was part of our fabric. Mm. Well, we became part of the fabric here. It's very easy to do. Um, and and from an instructional standpoint of view, you've given me the opportunity, the privilege to see the blueprint to the learning center, which I'm going to say is going to be. Everybody says this about learning centers. I've seen some of the best. And this one 
is so unique and so different with all the other things tied into it. Like you said, breakfast and video games and, and uh, simulators and that kind of thing. It becomes its own little entertainment spot, mm -hmm. for lack of a better way of saying it. While at the same time, if I need to fit a tour veteran, the tools are there. If I need to bring up a collegiate player, I've got a couple at ETSU right now. Hey, drive the three hours south. Here's where I'm going to be. This is what we're going to work on. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. It's it's all here. It's it's just I could I couldn't ask for much more. Yeah. And it's but it's, you probably will. <laughs> <laughs> I never get a chance because you're always doing that to me. So, your turn. What do you want to know? Well, t teaching has changed so much, and and um, I, I can remember growing up in South Carolina. I was maybe eight or nine years old, and it was the co coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And you, I'm sure you had one of these. I'd never seen my swing before. And I'd already started to win some tournaments, some state championships and that sort of stuff. And somebody shows up at this golf course where I grew up called Tiga K uh, in, in just Neat south of place. Charlotte. And, and it was this like um, Polaroid camera that um, would do swing sequencing. And it was in black and white. Right. And you'd have to set the dial. If somebody had a fast paced swing, you'd have to change the setting, 19... a slower pace, you'd set it. 19 it got the golf around 1987 88 yeah and the thing is 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 and th this when i had it might even have been a, 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 an earlier version even but they took it and it was like three or four tries and it got my swing in sequence you know and you and it was like you get you here 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 and it was a little blurry and that was like the coolest thing i'd ever seen and and i think from that piece of technology blowing a young go junior golfer away to the tools that you have at your disposal uh, that you carry around in your vehicle and set up under a tent. I mean, it's like, That's it is night and day. It's like from horse-drawn buggy thing. to going to the moon, you know, and, and your career has spanned that whole time. So how, how much of a challenge has the technology been for you to learn and use and how much of an opportunity has it been for you? So a little backstory to that Polaroid system as a professional soccer player, it was used on me back in 1980 as a prototype. Mm -hmm. And we studied, in my particular case as a goalkeeper, how we're gonna use our footwork to launch correctly or if we're prone as we're diving. And mm -hmm. it, was it was like, really? How are we gonna learn off of this? Which has morphed into, literally in my vehicle, I carry flight scope, body track, hack motion, sports box AI, just to name four technologies. Technology changes almost every day. There, there's a update to something almost every day. But what's really cool about it is three things. It's confirming the knowledge base that was provided me by some of my mentors. Jim Flick comes to mind when I was with Golf Digest schools. Uh, Skip Malik, when I was in Hilton Head at, at Sea Pines Academy, uh, those two really stand out to me, as well as a little bit of time with Butch Harmon, David Ledbetter is a, a friend, and we've spoken a lot. All these things have been confirmed that, that they have talked about, and even going back to Henry Cotton and, and Varden, all technologies confirm, yeah, this is they were right, mm -hmm. and that's really cool which in turn, number two, takes the guesswork out of things. If you're in a coach now, and I talk a lot about there's teachers, there's instructors, and there's coaches, and I've always strove, and I've always strove to be a coach. Mm -hmm. And to me, the analogy is think about the best teacher you had in high school or in college. They were always, if they saw you at the bar, they'd have a drink with you. If, we're, if in high school they saw you at the mall, they want to know about mom and dad and, and your siblings. Mm -hmm. They didn't care about school. And then the teachers, were they only wanted to see you at school. And when the bell rang, they were glad you left. Mm -hmm. And I always str I, I can still think of two or three in the back of my mind. And that, that's really where I was going with this is the coaches are always looking for not only their mentors and to confirm what the mentors are saying, but Let's take the guesswork out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what technology has been able to do. And 
once you get up to speed with one platform, some of the other platforms as they integrate, not only become the aha moments, it, it all of a sudden as you continue to learn and you see some things, it's like, wow, I was wrong with Charlie three years ago or whatever, that we need to do something different. Mm -hmm. Or as a beginner, dumbing it down yeah. to, to the point where let's not worry about 28 parameters of flight scope, let's only work about their center of contact. Right. Which is ball speed, club speed, all the other things put together, we can now dummy it down and have someone focus on just one thing. But, but isn't that the key to your job and your passion is figuring out the student that's in front of you, how they learn, what information that they need. And, and, I'll, get, and I'll give you this example. Um, I'm not competitive anymore. When I turned 50, I tried to play a few times on Champions Tour. I, I shouldn't yeah, I have was, done it. I was at I, the Ritz range. Right, right, to help you right. Out. Yeah, so, so I had been, uh, you know, working for 20 years and not playing golf. But, but it was fun to get back into it and, and, you know, at least give it a shot, four or five tournaments. But um, the, te the technology for me, and I'm at one end of the spectrum, if I'm working with you, I, I, I don't want, to look at the video screen, I don't care what the numbers say. You're not that I, all kind of, of that person. technology. But but what I want is I want your expertise to use those tools to look at it and then tell me, hey, you're 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 little here. I need you here. That's all I need to know. And that's and, what and, the great and, yeah, coaches and I, are doing. And I don't need to know this is eight degrees and it should be eleven degrees. It's just like you're here and I need you here. Let's go do it. That's me. Other people want to dig in and know all of the numbers oh, the, and angles the, and all of that. Elite juniors I've got now are always, oh, I need to look at every shot, and I'm having to get them old mm. school into a Charlie Reimer. Let's not worry about every shot. Yeah. You just need to worry about this. Well, that's what I mean. I and can, I can buy the fun. machine and figure out the number and look at right. the numbers, but, but I need to filter that through your expertise to get to something that, that I can consume. And at the end of the day, all the technology adds up to what I'm going to call hitting a golf ball. Yeah. Whether it's a putt, a chip, a driver, everything in between. What our business, our niche business within the golf industry fell into poorly, and I'm to blame, was we were always teaching people how to hit. And now I spend a lot more time teaching people how to play. Yeah. I'm on the and course score. a lot. I'm on the course a lot, having them understand their trends, yeah. not their weaknesses. Hey, this is what you do on a regular basis. What can we do to utilize it right. versus trying to fix it out there? And I a think if Avoid most, your weaknesses, play to your strengths. Well, and what is your strength? And a lot of times an amateur, that higher handicap, sees the slice or the fade and, and they think of it as a weakness. Mm. Start thinking of, of it as your strength, the mm. thing that will repeat. You're, you're wanting to get consistent, look at what you're consistent with. Right. And then let's plot out where these things are landing and put you in the proper positions or have you aim to the proper places to where now all of a sudden you're in play and you have opportunities to score. You may not convert them, but you got to get the opportunities first. Yeah. And as you get more opportunistic and become comfortable with it, then all of a sudden the game gets fun. Yeah. And I've always, you've known me, as long as you've known me, I, I have a phrase, I have fun or I change what I do. Right. And that's why people come to see me because they want a result. And the result is I want to have more fun. Yeah. Period. Well, one, one of the things that bothers me when, when I watch the modern tour players and they, and they all have the, the, the ball flight instruments and um, I, I see players hitting golf balls and the ball's in the air and instead of looking at that ball to see, they're looking at the screen, they're looking at the screen right? And they entered the ball, you know, when I learned with the ball flight, law nine ball flight rules, the laws of ball flight, you know, I mean, it either starts right, center, or left, it's, it's high, medium, or low, it curves right, or it curves left. And you look at the flight of that ball and have to relate that back to what's going on in your swing. And if you're looking at this, at, 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 at this screen that's just showing this data, you don't see the golf ball. Well the, well, the thing about it is, is you know, for me, if I'm on the on the golf course on a Friday afternoon trying to make the cut on the PGA Tour, I, I don't have a screen to look at. I've got to look at the ball, you know. So while the technology is important, you also have to play golf heads up and see what's going on, and that's how you make corrections in a round is by seeing Correct. what it's doing and either Correct. going with it or correcting it. And it's not a correction. You know this as long as you play the tour. It's a slight adjustment. 
Yeah, so that's it's all generally it, is ball position. It's a it's a dimple here or a dimple there. Yeah, at that kind of level. Uh, I always talk about two plus two doesn't always equal four. Mm -hmm. Two being being your setup, the second two being your swing. And if you think it's always going to equal four, you're dead wrong. Yeah. Because the setup may have been 2.5 and your swing may have been 0.5. That equaled three. If that doesn't equal four, what was it? Was it too much setup? Was it too much swing just to dummy it down a little bit? Right. But that's exactly what you're talking about. You can have all the numbers in the world, but what does it relate back to? How you're setting up to make the swing? You're a machine. And, and, and how do you adjust to it when you're in... Whatever is a situation that stresses you, if it's competitive or if Whether it's, it's you or the elements or the golf course or the people you're playing with, it mm. doesn't matter. You, yeah. You've got to be able to very level-headedly adjust to the surroundings you're in. That's what makes this, uh, like I say, I played professional soccer and uh, there were different environments but nothing like golf. Yeah. Every, I mean, almost every shot, there could be a different environment. Yeah. Uh, and, and you've got to be able to problem solve. And that, that's what it boils down to for the world's elite. Yeah, and, you, and you have to have the mental discipline to be analytical and not emotional about it. And that's, exactly. that's where a lot of people struggle, especially on the competitive side. That's where I struggled a lot. I, I was playing poorly rather than analyzing it and breaking it down and trying to figure a path out. I would get emotional and and get mad and angry and you know well I you know I've been and that leads to bad self talk and you know I stink and I'm you know I I'm, I'm quitting and all of that sort of stuff and people don't realize how much of that goes on at the highest levels of of, of tour people just thinking bad and beating themselves up and and that's why you don't see a whole lot of laughing and cutting up in professional golf. The the other thing that gets lost in all this, and I was having this discussion with Gene picking him up at the airport last night, is one of my students up at ETSU right now, he's sitting on a stool that has three legs, and he's sitting on one leg, and the other two haven't developed, and that's yeah. ball striking. And he's fallen into all the statistical categories, which aren't wrong. Let me Let me go on the record. They're not wrong. But I think the same thing happened to you when you turned 50. It was ball striking, ball striking, ball striking. And the first tournament you played in Orlando was walking along at the end of the day. It was like, hey, it wasn't my ball striking. Was I couldn't else? put it in. I couldn't it was put it in a swimming pool from two feet away. Right. And, and the, the analogy, the visual analogy of, hey, you've, you're, you're trying to sit on a stool that only has three legs. In essence, the fourth one is your emotions, yeah. keeping them in check. And I think you know this as well as anybody. If you can have at least two of those legs working for you, you've got a fighting chance. Mm. But when you get a third one, yeah, you can play world-class golf. And guess what? When all four of them are there, it's when the brilliance of a Tiger or a Jack mm -hmm. or an Arnie or a Hogan comes out exactly. or, or Robert Tyree comes out. I mean, mm. that's... That's really what I try to get across to anybody. I don't care if you're a single-digit elite player or you've never held a golf club before. Let's just, let's just try to solve a problem. It's really simple. Let's have fun doing it. Let's not overcomplicate it. Let me worry about the numbers. You worry about having fun. And when you're not having fun, guess what? I'm going to probably... You look at the numbers and tell me what I well, need to no, do. Well, no, what I'm probably going to do is tell them a funny story about Charlie Reimer. Is what I'm probably gonna do. <laughs> yeah. I can't say more. And, I, I, and again, for for the short time that we've known each other, I love you. I appreciate what you've been and meant to me. And I'm looking forward to spending a lot of quality time with you, particularly here at Macklemore. Uh, when you're here and Charlie's here, let him know you know me and maybe he'll provide you some dust for your cookie. Is the way I'd say it. <laughs> That's a good way to end it. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say that the friendship and love and respect is mutual. So thank, thank you, John. You. Thank you. Appreciate We're happy to have you spend as much time as you can here at Macklemore. <laughs> just don't eat any of my cookies. <laughs> They're mine. <laughs>